Thank you for choosing Cal ISO Corporation for your training needs. This short video clip is presented to introduce you to some basic information on the requirements of the SAE International Aerospace Standard AS9100 Revision D. AS9100 Revision D is intended for use by organizations that design, develop, or provide aviation, space, and defense products and services. This standard also applies to organizations providing post-delivery activities, including the provision of maintenance, spare parts, or materials for their own products and services. This standard is based on the quality management principles described in ISO 9000, which are customer focus, leadership, engagement of people, process approach, improvement, evidence-based decision-making, and relationship management. The adoption of a quality management system is a strategic decision for an organization that can help to improve its overall performance and provide a sound basis for sustainable development initiatives. The potential benefits to an organization of implementing a quality management system based on this standard are listed here. This standard employs the process approach, which incorporates the plan, do, check, act, or PDCA cycle and risk-based thinking. The process approach enables an organization to plan its processes and their interactions. The diagram seen here represents the structure of the standard and how each clause relates to the PDCA cycle. Clause 1 defines the scope of this standard as one that specifies requirements for a quality management system when an organization needs to demonstrate its ability to consistently provide products and services that meet customer and applicable statutory and regulatory requirements, and aims to enhance customer satisfaction through the effective application of the system, including processes for improvement of the system and the assurance of conformity to customer and applicable statutory and regulatory requirements. Clause 2 lists both ISO 9000-2015 and ISO 9001-2015 as documents that are both referenced in this standard and are indispensable for its application. Clause 3 identifies terms and definitions applicable to this standard. In addition to the terms and definitions identified in ISO 9000-2015, AS9100D specifically identifies counterfeit part, critical items, key characteristics, product safety, and special requirements as applicable to the implementation of this standard. Clause 4 outlines the requirements for creating an awareness of the context of the organization. This includes understanding the organization by determining external and internal issues that are relevant to its purpose and its strategic direction and that affect its ability to achieve the intended results of its quality management system. Additionally, the organization shall understand the needs and experiences of interested parties, determine the scope of the quality management system, and the organization shall establish, implement, maintain, and continually improve a quality management system, including the processes needed and their interactions in accordance with the requirements of the standard. In addition to the requirements listed on the previous slide, AS9100D requires that the organization's quality management system shall also address customer and applicable statutory and regulatory quality management system requirements, and also establish and maintain documented information that may be compiled into a single source referred to as a quality manual. Clause 5 outlines the requirements for demonstrating top management leadership and commitment establishing and communicating a quality policy and for ensuring that the organizational roles, responsibilities, and authorities are communicated and understood. In addition to the requirements listed on the previous slide, AS9100D requires that top management shall demonstrate leadership and commitment by ensuring product and service conformity and on-time delivery and shall appoint a management representative. Clause 6 discusses the requirement that an organization must address both risks and opportunities when planning for the quality management system. In addition, the organization is required to establish quality objectives, a plan for achieving the quality objectives, and how changes to the quality management system will be managed. 
Clause 7 states that the organization shall determine and provide the resources needed for the establishment, implementation, maintenance, and continual improvement of the quality management system. This includes the need to provide the people, the infrastructure, the environment for the operations of its processes, the monitoring and measurement of resources, measurement traceability, and organizational knowledge. The requirement for competence includes the necessity of periodically reviewing the competence determined to be critical. Awareness requires that persons shall be aware of relevant documented information, their contribution to the organization, and the importance of ethical behavior. Additionally, Clause 7 includes requirements for communication and documentation. Communication specifically requires inclusion of internal and external feedback relevant to the quality management system, and documented information includes appropriate approval methods and the prevention of the unintended use of obsolete documentation. Clause 8 covers the requirements for all of operations. This includes operational planning and control in areas such as operational risk management, configuration management, product safety, and prevention of counterfeit parts. Clause 8 also covers the specific requirements for products and services such as customer communication, determining the requirements for the products and services, review of those requirements, and any changes to those requirements. Additionally, Clause 8 outlines requirements for the design and development of products and services in the areas such as planning, inputs, controls, outputs, and changes. Clause 8 continues on to cover the control of externally provided processes, product, and services. The related requirements for these areas include the type and extent of control and the information provided to external providers. Clause 8 also includes the requirements for production and service provisions. Specifically, these include control of the production and service provision, identification and traceability, property belonging to customers or external providers, preservation, post-delivery activities, and control of changes. Clause 8 continues on with the requirements for the release of products and services. These requirements include that the organization shall implement planned arrangements to verify that the product and service requirements have been met and that the release of products and services to the customer shall not proceed until the planned arrangements have been satisfactorily completed. Clause 8 concludes by covering the requirements for the control of nonconforming outputs such as that the organization shall ensure that outputs that do not conform to their requirements are identified and controlled to prevent their unintended use or delivery, and the organization shall also retain documented information that describes the nonconformity, the actions taken, any concessions obtained, and identifies the authority deciding the action. Clause 9 of the standard focuses on performance evaluation. This clause requires that an organization determines the elements of their system that need to be monitored, measured, analyzed, and evaluated, as well as implementation of an internal audit program. Clause 9 also identifies the requirement for management review. This includes requirements for planning and carrying out a management review, as well as the expected outputs of the management review, such as opportunities for improvement, any need for changes to the quality management system, and any resource needs. Clause 10 focuses on areas of improvement. The organization shall determine and select opportunities for improvement and implement any necessary actions to meet customer requirements and enhance customer satisfaction. We certainly hope that you found this video helpful. You can now proceed with the first slide of the online course.